Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are revisiting the battle of the the budget mid-range GPUs. Yeah, I suppose that's what we'll call them. Um, yeah, the whole mid-range GPU thing, it's a bit crazy now. The price range is a lot uh, broader than it used to be, but I'll, we'll stick with mid-range GPUs. Anyway, as the title suggests, I am talking about the Radeon RX 574 gigabyte and GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Now, for months, I've been recommending to viewers that you get the RX 570 if you're on a budget and, well, you're always on a budget, but if you've got less than $200 of your budget to allocate towards the graphics card, I recommend looking for one with an RX 570 GPU. Really is the best value, uh, yeah, the best everything right now, the best value budget graphics card option. And I've been doing this without an updated comparison with its nearest competitor, that would be the GTX 1050 Ti. So I thought it was about time that we corrected that. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk about specs or anything else at this point. I'm just gonna assume that you're all very familiar with these GPUs. So in total, I've tested with 36 games, all of which have been tested at 1080p and 1440p. However, I am only gonna discuss the results for 14 of the games and then jump to our big performance breakdown. Having said that, if you wanna check out any of the graphs that we didn't discuss, they will be available for free. Uh, the link will be in the video description that'll point you over to a public post on our Patreon account. As usual, our Corsair GPU test rig built inside the Crystal Series 570X has been used, and inside we have a Core i9 9900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3200 memory. I've explained in the past why we test all GPUs, low-end and high-end, with the same extreme test system. It's not as black and white as some people make it out to be. Uh, not everyone uses the same quality settings and resolutions, so we aim to provide the best middle ground possible. Anyway, I know the vast majority of you get it, so I won't go on about this. Let's just get to the good stuff. First up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a super demanding title in terms of visuals and using the highest quality preset, it was a bit overwhelming for the GTX 1050 Ti. While the 1050 Ti was good for just 32 FPS on average, the RX 570 pumped out 52 FPS, making it 63% faster. And that's obviously a massive win for AMD. That said, AMD enjoyed by far their biggest win in Strange Brigade. Here the 570 completely obliterates the 1050 Ti, almost doubling its performance at both resolutions. At 1080p, the Radeon GPU was 93% faster, and at 1440p, almost average 60 FPS, while the 1050 Ti struggled with around 30 FPS. It's quite incredible that the performance margins can be that extreme. The RX 570 also easily beat the GTX 1050 Ti when testing with Battlefield 5 at either 1080p or 1440p. In fact, whereas the 1050 Ti was barely able to provide playable performance at 1440p, the RX 570 was very playable with over 50 FPS at all times. Admittedly, for competitive first-person shooters, that's not really enough, but these cards are intended for 1080p gaming, and here the 570 maintained well over 60 FPS at all times. Sniper Elite 4 is another DirectX 12 title, and it can take advantage of async compute. So unsurprisingly, the 570 absolutely roasts the 1050 Ti uh, once again here. Here it was 75% faster at 1080p, resulting in a night and day difference for the gaming experience. Monster Hunter World is a very demanding title, but even so, using the highest quality preset with the RX 570, it was able to provide playable frame rates at 1080p. The GTX 1050 Ti though, well, not so much. Here the Radeon GPU was a whopping 62% faster. Has to be said that both GPUs did perform rather well in Warframe at 1080p, and although the RX 570 was 35% faster, the 1050 Ti did just fine with 91 FPS on average. The performance difference was more noticeable at 1440p, although the 570 was still 35% faster, but again, the margin's more impactful here as we are talking about lower frame rates. Just Cause 4 isn't exactly the most well-optimized title to be released last year, but still the RX 570 was able to provide playable performance at 1080p. The same can't be said for the GTX 1050 Ti, however, here the GeForce GPU was 33% slower. Now I was going to discuss the Forza Horizon 4 results, but you'll see the margins for that title in the big breakdown graph a little later on in the video. Instead, I thought we could discuss GTA 5. I know it's a very old game, some of you point that out when we do include it, but it's very popular, and because of that, if we don't include it, we get loads and loads of comments asking us to include GTA 5. So here it is, and I thought I would discuss the results here because it is quite interesting. Previously, the GTX 1050 Ti did best the RX 470. 
However, it seems through possible further driver development, and of course the factory overclock, the 570 is able to stick it to the 1050 Ti, offering 10% more performance. So AMD does very well here in what is a worst case scenario for the RX 570 in its GTX 1050 Ti battle. Moving on, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is typically a bad title for AMD. They generally come out well behind in this one. That said, the RX 570 is sufficiently fast on the GTX 1050 Ti, and as such, it manages to come out with a win here, and a decent win at that, offering 17% more performance at 1080p. More importantly, using the very high quality preset, the 570 was able to keep frame rates above 30 FPS at all times, and therefore provide what we call playable performance. The GTX 1050 Ti only averaged 35 FPS with frequent dips below 30 FPS, so the gameplay was noticeably choppy. Next up, we have Hitman 2, and despite the lack of DirectX 12 support for this most recent installment in the Hitman series, the RX 570 storms home for an easy win, beating the GTX 1050 Ti by a 41% margin. The previous version of Hitman did support DirectX 12, and using it we find a pretty brutal result. Here the RX 570 crushed the GTX 1050 Ti by an incredible 64% margin. Again, pretty brutal stuff here. It's not the most extreme margin we've seen, but I think most of you will agree 64% is still a rather extreme margin. The good news for Fortnite players is that either of these GPUs will allow for playable performance at 1080p. That said, the RX 570 was once again the superior performer, impressive given this title uses the Unreal 4 engine, which heavily favors Nvidia hardware. Anyway, here the RX 570 was 23% faster when looking at the average frame rate, and we are testing with the latest AMD driver, which does improve Fortnite performance for Season 7. Both the GTX 1050 Ti and RX 570 provided very playable performance at 1080p in Rainbow Six Siege. That said, with a 28% performance advantage, the RX 570 did enable a noticeably better gaming experience. And the last game that we're going to discuss results for is World of Tanks, and here the 570 offered 33% more frames at 1080p. Both did provide excellent performance though, but the Radeon GPU was of course faster. And then at 1440p, the 570 was noticeably better, hitting 66 FPS on average, opposed to just 48 FPS for the 1050 Ti. Upon release, the GTX 1050 Ti's reception could be best described as lukewarm, and this was due to its lackluster price versus performance ratio. That said, as Radeon prices increased due to a demand from cryptocurrency miners, the 1050 series became very popular amongst gamers, as they didn't suffer the same price hikes or didn't suffer them nearly to the same degree as the Radeon GPUs. However, Radeon pricing has now fallen back down to MSRP levels, and in the case of the RX 570, it can often be had for less than the $170 US MSRP. And that's been the case for a few months now, as we've seen prices drop as low as $150 US. But before we get into pricing, let's take a quick look at how these two GPUs compare overall in all 36 titles. Okay, so the Radeon RX 570 was 43% faster than the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti on average at 1080p across 36 modern or popular titles. The biggest wins were seen in DirectX 12 titles supporting async compute. That said, AMD did sponsor Strange Brigade and Sniper Elite 4, so keep that in mind. Meanwhile, the smallest wins were seen in Grand Theft Auto 5 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and neither title has proven to be all that AMD friendly in the past, but even so, the 570 was still able to get up over the 1050 Ti here. So that means even a worst case scenario for the 570 meant a 10% victory, so not all that bad. Typically though, you can expect the 570 to be at least 20% faster. Again, as we saw on average, it is over 40% faster if you include enough games. Okay, so the Radeon RX 570 is obviously the superior product in terms of performance. And now that it can be had for the same amount as the 1050 Ti, or generally it's a little bit cheaper, it's really the obvious choice. And that's why we've been heavily recommending it for months now. It's pretty simple, really. I uh, don't think there's much more to say on this one or much more that we really could say. I will just note that the RX 570's power consumption is significantly higher, but even so, it's not really extreme at around 300 watts for a total system using a high-end processor. So while it is extreme relative to the 1050 Ti, it's certainly not outrageous overall. I would like to just close by saying that this video has been a long time coming and I've personally been working on it for about two weeks now. That said, two weeks of solid work didn't go into it. I've obviously been working on other projects at the same time, but over that period, any spare time has been diverted to this content. 
So that said, my current issues with NVIDIA in no way reflects what has been shown here or my interpretation of the data. As I said at the start of the video, I've been heavily recommending the RX 570 ever since it dropped down to $150 US. And in that time, I have not once revisited performance. So we've done that now, and now I can focus my attention on the big RTX 2060 benchmark video. As always, if you enjoyed the testing, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content just like this. And if you appreciate the work we do at Horrorbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.